Today we'll be looking at cohabitation, which is when two people decide to live together on a permanent basis or short-term basis. We look at this cohabitation thing with a lot of insight. We have been, the Western influences is diluting a lot of things and corrupting a lot of values that we have that made our society what it was in the past. It's sane and simple Aisha, and valued. No, let me explain no, no. why. Let me you are the one, on, you, let me you, are, you are the one that explain. is not following no, me. Whether well, it's marriage or it's cohabitation, right? The point is, there's a separation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Amazons. Progressively changing social cultural attitudes of Nigerians has allowed cohabitation to slowly become a common phenomenon in the modern day society. Due to the high rate of divorce and increase in single parenting, aside from this, over 50% of married couples cohabit in some form briefly before marriage. It is slowly becoming an alteration parallel to the rise of divorce in the divorce rate. Consequently, the average age of marriage has risen significantly. Young adults seem to consider premarital cohabitation as a substitute to marriage, and some parents are beginning to accept it as a prerequisite to marriage, though it is still seen by majority as a threat to the marriage institution. Welcome to Amazons. Today we'll be looking at cohabitation, which is when two people decide to live together on a permanent basis or short-term basis. Also, we'll be looking at the effect of cohabitation on our society, the legal implication for cohabitants, and of course, the possible causes of cohabitation. Bimbo and Aisha, welcome to our show. <laughs> Thank you, Dela. Cohabitation. <laughs> I'm gonna put both of you on, on the spot. Tell me, at one time or the other, have you ever lived with a man? I have never cohabited. I have. I haven't. Aisha, what about when you were in school? I have never cohabited. What about when Cohab you go and visit your boyfriend Excuse and stay me, with him for two you, you weeks, gave three us weeks? The description of cohabitation. When they decide to live together permanently on a short term basis, do, to, do all the things that married couples do. I've, I've never done that. You go and visit your boyfriend and you go back to your home. That is not cohabitation, which is what I did Don't forget when I was in secondary school. The, okay, the you're holding this. <laughs> so, and then it was totally frowned upon. It would never have been accepted. Like 20 years ago, you didn't find a lot of people cohabiting. Like the, it, it's done now. I think this is just influences from, you know, other cultures that we have imbibed as Nigerians and we think there's no big deal to it. And for some people it's because maybe it's expensive. Well, I did at one point or the other, you know, I did once and um, I don't think I'll do it again. Why? It's basically being a housewife without being a wife. That's right. And there are so many, there are so many uh, implications to that. You cohabitate, you do all the things that married couples do. Uh, at the end of it, it, if it doesn't work out, you, you work out with nothing. And really, you begin to question your own, you know, your own, well, this is me. I begin to question my own values. What, why did I even do it in the first place? Modern times, modern innovation, modern situations, they call it. But I think these are just excuses. Why would you cohabitate? Cohabitation in what, in which circumstance that I, be, I, I move into a man's house or a man decides to move in with me. Remember, it's not only a woman I'm moving into the man's house. The man can also decide to move in with, with the, the woman, woman and then you share the bills or one partner is paying the bill all the time or you share it and do together. I mean, do all the things married couple do and then but, 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 if you then decide to separate, it's like you, you are divorcing Aisha, even though you are no, not married. Aisha, you're even looking at a point of view that you marriage know? is better. Well, looking at the situation that we have in Nigeria today, What's the difference between that I and think marriage? People, that's sense, exactly what I was going to say. In the sense that say. you divorce, what, what, what do you, you what said, do you have in Nigeria? You, today? you you were saying that you leave the relationship with nothing. Marriage is women are, and men are living with nothing. It's happening day in day out. A lot of people are living, still leaving marriages with nothing. I, for, for me, right, it's not about what you get when you're leaving, which is your entitlement at the end of the day. It's important. I agree. It's the fact that when you cohabit, there's it doesn't have the same respect. 
as when you are married, when you've called everybody to witness your union, when you've legalized. Yes. What it is is that you're just doing this and it doesn't bring about the same respect. The fact that you have even brought in children to it makes it even more dangerous and unappealing. A child or children that are brought about under cohabitation, what legal status do they have? They are just concubines, just like the mother is a concubine. So why do you want to put a child or children through that? Why don't you wait um, and do the proper marriage? I, I understand that there are, a lot of, there are a lot of reasons why we want to get married, both men and women. There are a lot of reasons why you want to put a ring on your finger and be under a man's roof and be called a Mr. and Mrs. you know, and all of that. But in all of this, we must look, we must begin, we look at this cohabitation thing with a lot of insight. We have been, Western influences is diluting a lot of things and corrupting a lot of values that we have that made our society what it was in the past. It's sane and simple Aisha, you're and valued. No, let me explain no, why. Let me you explain why. Hold on, let me explain why you are the one that is not following no, me. Viewers at home, cohabitation, we need to talk about it. We're taking a short break and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> So you find out that cohabitation is actually a failure of understanding what marriage is all about. Check out those that cohabit. They may have been failures of failed marriages. Or In the line of their family. Exactly. So, so it's like, it's okay for me to do so. The problem here is that parents don't know that the idea is that govern your children is not what you are telling them, it's how you behave. Naturally, we are not supposed to cohabit or have sex before marriage. But with the um, situation where we find ourselves now, men want to be sure of what they want to marry. They want to know if they're, she's capable of conceiving. Sometimes they will want their child, they want their wife to get pregnant before they get married because of probably what they, they have inherited from their family. So they want to know if the girl is fertile for childbearing and then they want to be sure of what they are going into. But naturally, they should leave that before marriage. I support that. There should be no sex before marriage. If you face, for instance, uh, I must have kind of knowledge with a lady before I marry. It is isn't if you say it's strong, then why do you do biological... Uh, Biological uh, tests like a uh, blood group, a group, and other before you marry, whether the guy is a sickler or has HIV or not. There is this general maxim in the public that when it comes to prayer, when the pastor or the Reverend Father says, Close your eyes, you open your eyes because you want to know what you are buying. If, for instance, hypothetically, I, have to, I want to marry and I, ha I have a relationship with a lady, I cannot imagine her. I cannot imagine who she I can't imagine who she is until the first day on bed after marriage, after three or four year relationship. I don't think it's feasible. Because don't post even the guy you are talking about, who you think she's a virgin, she's not a virgin. Whether you test or you don't test, it's still the something. Whether you test or you don't test, anything that can happen can happen after marriage. But it depends on what you want for the marriage. Even if it's not working out well, you can still make it work. It depends on what you want. So staying together before marriage doesn't uh, guarantee you a solid marriage. It doesn't. It's scripturally wrong and um, God does not support it. There's no, there's no law that protects particularly the female, you know, here in Nigeria. Ecclesiastes says there's a time for everything. There's a purpose for everything under heaven. So in the event of um, this cohabitation, the law is very clear. Very clear. Nothing. There's no ambiguity. No. The law that uh, protects uh, cohabitation in England or elsewhere does not exist in Nigeria. No. Hmm? Welcome back to Amazons. Today we're talking about cohabitation. 
Is it something that is good? Is it something that we should do? Is it something that the children or the, or the products of such cohabitation, what are they called? I mean, in this day and age. Children. As Bimbo said, children are, are children, children are children. Yeah, there's, a, there's a Yoruba adage that says, Omolomonje. They are children. I'm sorry, look, a lot of us make... So, um, I don't know what... Look, I've made my Aisha, point and go, I've gone past it. I understand what you're saying, it. but Seriously. my point is... Right. This is my opinion, and this I stand by it. You cohabitate, you have children, it doesn't work out, you go away, the man goes out, marries another person legally, they are living together as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Where does that leave the children? Okay, you marry Very a simple. man, you legally marry a man, you get a divorce, you've gone, he's married somebody else, he has another family, it's the same thing. Okay, there was a marriage exactly, before a divorce. We're still talking the marriage you're, you're, you're Cohabitation, there's no marriage in it. You see, no, 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 whether no. It's no. Marriage, whether it's marriage or it's cohabitation, right? The point is, there's a separation. Yeah. At the end of the day. But the separation, you've moved uh, on. different circumstances now. I was married, we are no longer married, we get a divorce. Okay, but hold on. Cohabitation, hold on. there's hold no marriage Aisha, in the first Aisha, case. Aisha, 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 so, so define children from broken homes. Broken homes means that there, there's a divorce. There was a marriage what before the what home about, was broken. What about children from cohabitation? They are cohabitation? children. They are children. They are, children. Children children are, are children legal children. And children from children broken homes, children. whether the parents are married or not, children the children are, children. are from broken Bro homes. Broken means that there is a divorce, and there was a marriage before a divorce. Why, why is it so difficult to understand me? Uh, we've got a pastor and a relationship counselor in the house, and we've also got a social change advocate as well. So let them come on set, and let's hear what they have to say, and then they can tell us who is right or wrong. Uh, our call on set, Mrs. <laughs> Inkiru Banjoku and Victor L. Kennedy. Thanks for joining yes. us. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Mm. 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 Please take a seat. <laughs> Can we have Victor L. Kennedy as well, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this heated set today. We are talking about cohabitation. Now, you're a pastor and you're also a counselor. I mean, in, in, in your line, do you think cohabitation is something that is on a, on a, on a high rise in, in the country right now? Yes, thank you very much. Um, it's on the rise. Yes, it is. I know that even in the church, you know, such a problem also exists as well. And um, I feel it's because people don't really understand what marriage really means. You know, right now you have young girls being pushed by their parents to just be a missus and put a ring on their finger and have children. But you see, marriage is more than just uh, I'm living with a man and I have a child or, or probably I have children. You know, when God made man and woman, he gave them a mission. He said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue and have dominion. So it wasn't just that I, I want to get married or that I'm good, you know, getting on the age or probably for a man, I want a woman to sleep with and cook my meal or something like that. But you see, over time, that vision became lost. In the society. It became a societal thing. You know, it wasn't spiritually gain. So it became that, you know, a man getting on the age and his mother said, ha, please, I want grandchildren you know, before I die. I want to see my grandchildren. So please go and marry I mean, whoever. Or for a young girl, she's finished school, she's working, and you know, it's like, ah, yeah, I'm getting 30 now, please go and get married. And that led to problems in many marriages and the disillusionment of what marriage really stands for. So you find out that cohabitation is actually a failure of understanding what marriage is all about. The purpose I of marriage. I can't see, I can't find where a girl decides to cohabit, where her parents are still living and are together. My own father wouldn't have supported me, he would have had my head. He would ask me, where did you learn that from? Check out those that cohabit. They may have been failures of failed marriages or in the line of their family. Exactly. So, so it's like, it's okay for me to do so. It's okay. So that's, that, that's the problem. 
Well, we is it not this? also an economical issue? Because if you look at the, the way things are in the country, a lot of people are finding it hard to, you know, scrape a living. And for some people, they want, they have dreams, visions of what they, even if they don't understand, because I do agree with you that a lot of people have, do not understand marriage or what it stands for, what it means, but everybody wants to do it because being a Mrs. Somebody is important at the end of the day. So they have, a, they have dreams of what their weddings should be like, what it should look like, how elaborate it should be, and you find them saving for years. And in, in the middle of this, they start to live together. Wouldn't you say one of the reasons that we have people cohabiting as well is because they're trying is because of the economic situation in the country marriage is not wedding that's why women need to be educated about what it's all about i already agree yeah. on that level it's not you know so if um, i'm saving you know because i want to get married to some guy who treats me like crap at the end of the day and i lose out on who i am as a person first of all i'm a woman i'm a living being first if I'm not complete in myself, and I think I can find that completeness in someone else, I've missed it. And it's not going to work. And that's what I see happening around, you know? So, so what you're, so, sorry, ma sorry um, Pastor, what you're saying is, um, it's not about the wedding, it's not about the finances, it's about the purpose for which the marriage institution was, was made established. For, uh, established yeah. in the And a place. woman must have confidence in herself as a person, must have the esteem that with or without a man, she's a living being that God loves, with or without the society. So if you're dependent on what the society is saying or what everyone has done, my mom married when she was 21, so I'm not my when I, I mean, when I'm 21 too, I got married when I was almost 30. Everybody was on me, but I couldn't really care less. I had a good job, but I, you know, everything. I was a church worker, but I wanted fulfillment as a woman first. What happens to that value that says, once you leave the, the roof, of your parents, you are handed over properly to a man to become a wife. It what does, happens to that? Because we, now we, we want to make it you know, an acceptable norm in our society. And I'm saying it's wrong. What is your own stand on this? Yeah, so my own stand in it is that, uh, folks, to live with a man that is not married to you is totally wrong. Because why? Uh, if the, the, from the beginning God made marriage and marriage an institute is a typology of the orderliness in heaven, as I believe. But the reason why girls run to men or men run to ladies is just because of uh, the loss of value, the decline in our system, that because this dysfunctionality in our homes because if you have your father, your mother being together and you're being brought up by these two people properly, you will not dumble, will not find yourself into those things. Actually, it is wrong. No matter what is your reason, no matter what you think it is, no matter you feel that I want to learn this young man, I want to know him more than I do. So when I come close, I'm gonna know him very well. That is rubbish. My father used to say that is boat. I don't know where he got it from. <laughs> if you grew up in a home where your parents made each other miserable, wouldn't you naturally gravitate towards not wanting permanence in marriage? Wouldn't marriage signify to you everything wrong? Sometimes it's happened that way because you'll be seeing the marriage as, a, as, a, as being a hell on earth. But, so, then, but then you did not have to. Because before you see your mother and your father doing that, you must have a moral value. You might, you might have had a moral value that look at this is the way to go. They might have, they, 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 the problem here is that parents don't know that the ideas that govern your children is not what you are telling them, it's how you behave. So they may be telling them... Because, because children mirror yes, their parents. They may yeah. be telling them, look at this, this, this is wrong. But you are not leaving that to them. So they believe and act and live the way you are living. So that's why I tell that the, the parents, we all, we all got it wrong sometimes, not all the time. Is cohabitation an alternative to marriage? Not at all. No, no, so, it's not. So if you do not want it's to not. get married, you want to, uh, you, you don't want to get married, you don't want to cohabitate. So is it all right to remain single? 
Of course, it's okay to remain it's single. It's a personal choice. So yeah, so, I mean, it's a personal choice. You have reverend fathers and nuns that decide to remain single. You know, so, so I mean, you can decide to remain single. What could be in? Uh, I mean, what what could be the reasons, or what can be the reasons for uh, 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 want to want to cohabitate and uh, in any way at all, whether on a short term or on a long term basis? You see, for a woman, I wouldn't even advise cohabitation because women are vulnerable emotionally. At the end of the day, you find a woman sleeping with. Okay, she cohabits for one year, it doesn't work out. Cohabits next year, but I mean, I've, and you know, if you're not careful, the next five years, she has cohabited with about 10 different men. For a woman, because women are sensitive emotionally, that can lower her self esteem, her self worth. She feels that if she's good enough, one man should just look at her, I want to marry her. But they have different bees perching on, you know on the same flower, and before you know it, that flower begins to wither. We did a play here, Ward, and there's, a, there's one of the pieces that they do. And the woman, it's the woman talking to her daughter from when she's 16 to when she's 45. She's at 16, she's telling her, don't you, you know, come on, that skirt is too short. Go and wear a longer skirt, how dare you? Don't you know that you're from a good family? How can you dress like that? By the time she's 20, okay, you're in school. Don't know boys, I don't want to see you with boys. By the time she's 30, she said, ah, where are the boys? By the time she's 35, she said, wear the shortest skirt you can find. Just bring <laughs> Me just a man. Me a man. <laughs> Let people know that my daughter too has married. Then by the time yeah. the girl was 40, she said, okay, Azuka, please, even if you can't marry, bring me a child. Mm. There you go, because that is that what is, is happening in the society. Why I mean, as far as I'm concerned, increase. I think the main reason why we're having the discussion today yeah. is it's just to bring it out. That's what Amazon is all about. Okay. To bring out those topics that people don't like to talk about, but at the same time, is eating deeply into our society. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Amazons. If you're just joining us, today we've been talking about cohabitation. Is it right? Is it been encouraged? Is it as a result of the high divorce rate or the present situation of the country? What are the churches doing about it? We have a pastor in the house with us who has told us that, um, uh, Pastor, you said it's because people are confused and don't know what marriage really is all about. That's, that's one of the reasons that's encouraging it. I mean, you said, I mean, in, in, in your line of work, it's happening. And one of, the, one of the reasons why you have decided to do what you're doing is to tell people that this is not right. It's not a solution to the present problem. I mean, Aisha, this cohabitation issue, I, I, don't, I, I don't even know how to go about it because like I said, my position is it's happening for whatever reason, it's happening. And I think it's time, if we talk about it, young people who are planning the, the to do it. the root of the matter. What is happening? Why are we doing this? Why is it happening so young frequently? People, yeah, yeah, but young people who are planning to do it, if they understand, by the time we start talking about it, obviously from discussing it here now, we have spoken about the fact that the effects on children, the fact that women lose themselves, their self-esteem, their value, value as well when they cohabit. I'm sure one or two people will be listening out there and they will understand because some of these people don't even know what cohabit. As far as they're concerned, I'm staying with a man. They actually don't even understand that there's a term for it. So we, we, are, we, we, we uh, cohabitation, we, 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 whether between man and woman, man and man, man and uh, woman, woman and, and woman. woman. <laughs> cohabitation is cohabitation. I wish there was a lawyer here. I'm, I'm concerned about the legal implication of cohabitation, the legitimacy of cohabitation and anything that is as a result of cohabitation. Because I made a point earlier, and I don't know, correct, I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, you know, where there are children involved, what happens to the legal status of those children? What happens to uh, uh, the legal status of a woman that is involved in cohabitation? These are, you know, these are concerns for me. You know, there are several reasons why people will want to cohabit, and they are valid and legal. I mean, they are valid and just. But how legal are these reasons? I can, how I can, acceptable I can answer, are these I can reasons? answer you looking at it from a legal point. Yeah. Now, they're beginning to have something called the um, cohabitation agreements. In Nigeria. That's what it's called. In Nigeria. 
all over the world now. But is it, is it, it also and it's in also Nigeria? legally binding as long as both parties agree to it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it from a, from a different... I'll, I'll come back to what you just asked. And what they're advising them to do now is before, if you do decide to cohabit, both of you should sit down and decide that should something happen, I will take this, this is what we would share, and this is what we would do for the children. And if both of them are happy, it's very close to, some, to the prenuptial agreement. That, you see, that tells you that it is around and it's happening. Now, in terms of what you said about the legal implication, I will tell you the truth, okay? You cohabit with a man as a woman, you are on your own. That's the truth. The only thing any woman in that position can pursue for, on the, even in Lagos, they don't have the Child Act, is maintenance. And before me, sometimes before you get that maintenance, you would really need to spend a lot of money with your lawyers. So you cohabit, you don't get anything. What exactly have you set in place in order to combat this problem? I mean, are you working with youths? Is this something that you infuse in counseling when they come to you? And also, Pastor, when you're doing your marriage counseling now, I mean, are you advising couples to think about this before they even, because a lot of couples cohabit. Let's not lie, it is happening. It, what, you may not have moved your stuff to the man's house, but if you spend six months Six months of, if, I would say six months of every year, which is every other weekend, in the man's house, you are cohabiting in one way or the other. So are you, is it something that has been included in, when, when young adults want to marry now and they come, come forward? Is it something that has been included to encourage them, to make them understand the true value of what marriage is, to stop this divorce? Because if divorce can decrease, I think people will gladly want to marry. Because I think fear sometimes. Yes, that's true, Delapo. Um, it's beyond just, um, you know, a marriage counseling thing, you know. It's something that you should start from secondary schools, you know. Let a girl know her worth as a woman. And sometimes when it gets to the point where they're about getting married, I mean, she has made up her mind or whatever it is that she wants to do. So that's late. So it calls for a leadership and a session workshop for women. Now, don't allow yourself to be bamboozled by whatever society has to offer you. If you're not working, there's something wrong with you. If you're not married, there's something wrong with you. No. That reason why you find a woman, you know, entering into a profession because her parents, you know, want her to be a doctor, and she's not happy being a doctor. She probably wants to be, uh, probably open a shop where she's selling things or probably interior decoration or something like that. You know, when a woman knows her worth, then she knows that on her own, she's okay. And at any point in time, she can choose the right person and take a risk. I was discussing with someone, I said, marriage is like entrepreneurship. You know, you don't know what's going to be there, but you have to make it work. If Bill Gates had given up on Microsoft in you know, the early years, we wouldn't have Windows today. But he didn't. He pursued it to the last. Most marriages that are working right now is because the couple been I mean, you know, their minds that we have to make sure this thing works. Nothing is easy in life. That's cohabitation or I, marriage. I, I, I have a question for the church, <laughs> Pastor. Yes, please. Um, is there anywhere in the Holy Book, the Bible, where it was specified that a woman at a certain, this is the age that a woman has to get married? So isn't church also uh, a pressure group on young women who are not married at a certain age, you know, where they now, uh, the church requires them to have special prayers, you know, uh, they, uh, ask them to do special fasting, ask them to <laughs> seek special counseling. Isn't that also a pressure group from the church on the young women to go out and get any man by whichever means or cohabitate, you know, in order, in order to move a step closer to, to marriage? Now, when you say the church, you know, I'm sure you're talking about denominations now because the church is a body of Christ. The, the church is and one. There is I'm nowhere, talking as there's one. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says a woman should marry a so-and-so age or for so-and-so reason. You see, the reason why it's important for a woman to be married is at one point in time, she's under the authority of her father. She can't be there forever. She can't give birth under her father's authority. She has to have a man who will be a cover, who will be a protector, who will be her strength, her shield. At God's chosen time. Yeah. Yeah, without the pressure from church. Yeah, without the pressure from anyone. 
So any church that is doing that or any denomination that is doing that, it's not working in line with God's principles because God hasn't said that. Okay, in Kiru, get married when you are 30 or when you are 25 or when you are this, you know. I have to be ready. Ecclesiastes says there's a time for everything. There's a purpose for everything under heaven. If I'm not caught up for marriage, I probably may not marry. If, if I'm going to be a Jezebel to one miserable man, I beg, I better remain single. Because that man is somebody's son. If, if, if I'm going to turn his heart against God, then I better remain single. There's a time for everything under heaven is what God says. Pastor, sorry, can I just also say something? I think it's somewhere, I, think, I don't know if it's in Corinthians, okay. where it says it is better to stay single. That but was, if you cannot manage, yes. then you can marry. So, it's so it wasn't as, like God actually imposed it. It's not an imposition. Okay. It's not an imposition. It's not. Members of the audience, um, I'd like to know how many of you have cohabitated before? Okay. All right, that's, I mean... And is this something that you're still doing presently or is something that you think you would like to change, obviously based on what we've just discussed here? My name is Mr. Felix and um, I'm a happily married man. Um, my marriage was um, a result of cohabitation. How long for? Um, the period of, um, say, six to eight months. Why did you cohabitate? Um, I think it, sh it should be um, a result of you know, my upbringing. Um, I was literally, you know, um, should I say, um, disturbed with the idea that my parents um, are not married and um, my wife as well has the same situation. So I, I asked myself, are you going to sit at home and wait till you're told what happened and why they didn't, you know, end up getting married or you're just going to go out there and just find someone for yourself and try to make it work? So I decided that I wasn't going to talk to my mom about it because she wasn't going to also come to me and say, hey, kid, this is what happened. And this is what you should do to avoid it. So I decided to, you know, try my own luck and go out there, find a woman. And she opened up my eyes to see that, look, we can actually make this work. What I want to know is why did you cohabit? Why did she move in with you? Why were you people living no, together? I moved in with her. OK, you moved in with her. OK, but why did you do it? Um, did you know you wanted to marry her when you first met her? Did yes, you have it on, I, did you have it in mind to marry her? Yes. Is someone else in the audience that wants to ask, has any contribution? The lady, the lady in the blue top. What's My your name? My name is Victoria. I just want to contribute. Okay. Right. Um, like in the Igbo culture is a taboo to just move in with a guy without paying the bride price. Have you stayed with your boyfriend before? No. Not even the weekend? Mm, weekend, <laughs> yes. So, but, so if he pays your bride price without taking you to court or the white wedding, you can move in with him? No. We must do the right thing. But that's not true. I know a lot of Igbo people, and as long as the traditional marriage is done, you will move in with him. Because okay, they believe that, more in the traditional marriage than even the court and the white so wedding. So there's a symbol it of is marriage right in, to in, pay in the wine carrying. Yeah. It so is as, long right. as, he, as long as he pays the dowry, which is very important, obviously, to your family and also to um, the tradition yes. the, and culture, you are comfortable with that. Thank you. Yes. Um, I think the gentleman in black up there. What's your name? My name is Harrison. Isaac. Harrison. 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 Harrison, yeah. Okay. Um, cohabitation. Why do people cohabitate? Low self-esteem. They want to get maximum hold of their partner or spouse, or because they love he or she. Um, there are some topics that, to me, when I hear of it, uh, the next thing is to look at the negative consequences. Then I give it a right off. I'm not in support of cohabitation. It's not something you support. It's not so I'm not in support of it. I'm not giving an eye at all. Because looking at the negative side of it, eventually if they don't get to to marry each other, one, consider considering the mental um effect, the societal um decrease in value, 
all the environmental um, effect because you now okay, the guy leaves the lady in the long run. People around, no respect for such a lady again because there's um, a tradition now that the tested and trusted, where the guy gets to impregnate the girl to know if she's fertile. Then if she's not, yeah, they do that. The, that that is, really now. it's absolutely wrong. Yeah, I'm not in support of cohabitation or or sort because in any before way. we give an answer to a particular issue, put ourselves in that situation. Yeah, do we want our children to find themselves in such? Yeah. Then if not, then it's a right off. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Pastor Mrs. Inke Rubanjoko and um, Victor L. Kennedy for joining us today. Pastor, you have contributed immensely and um, thank you so much for coming. We're going to take a short break now and then we'll be right back. But really nothing basically for, for the women. Nothing, nothing. I mean, so, so, so legally, there's nothing for them. No. Morally, traditionally, nothing, basically. Nothing. You do it, you're doing it at your own at risk. At your own risk. Welcome back to Amazons. We've been talking about cohabitation. We've looked at the effects, we've looked at the causes. We've also tried to see if it's, if it's a solution to the high divorce rate in our society. Uh, Bimbo and Aisha. Mm. It's not a solution. Divorce rate is if two people get married, they don't longer want to live together and they go their separate ways. Cohabitation, you know, from what I understand of it, there are so many reasons why you may be, you know, cohabitation may appeal to anyone, especially the young ones. And I'm saying that this, you know, those reasons may be due to economic reasons, due to uh, either peer pressure, parent pressure, uh, pressure from the, uh, uh, the holy houses, you know, pressure from society, uh, especially on the women. But these pressures, you know, can, if you can withstand them, the right man will come at the right time. Cohabitation can be, you know, it's not an enduring thing. In most cases, it, it never leads to an enduring thing. Sometimes some people get lucky and they get married, but in most cases, it you doesn't know, work they don't. Like that. And it, it only can, can break the heart of both parties. Mm -hmm. More so, the one who has invested in it emotionally, the more. Yeah, people. I don't, I don't know if we have statistics about how, uh, you know, what are the rates that does lead to marriage, but looking at it from a point of view, I, look, I'm not looking at the right or wrong of it. But I'm looking at the emotional, emotional problems that could arise from living with someone else. Because this is what it is. From what we have read, a lot of young girls decide that, oh, he's going to marry me. This is just a test drive period. And they're, they're doing everything they can to be the perfect wife without, the, you know, without it being legal. So when that breaks up, they start to doubt themselves. It brings about a lot of self, self doubt. And then you know, it, it leads to lack of self-confidence because you're thinking, I must have done. You know, we, we, women, we do this all the time. It's always our fault, never somebody else's fault. What did I do wrong that this didn't work out? Looking at it from that point of view, I would say do not, under any circumstances, live with anybody. We have in the studio joining us Patricia Ajayi, a lawyer to shed more light on cohabitation. <laughs> Patricia Ajayi. Thanks for joining me. Pleasure meeting you finally. Thank you so much. No serious Thank questions. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Amazon. Thank you so much for taking time out to join us here. Um, before you came on set, we've been told we were talking about cohabitation. Looking at it from a legal point of view, what do you think? You know, when you talk about cohabitation, it basically means um, living together, two adults coming together to stay together. Like you rightly said, when you're living together with somebody, what are the odds? Because children are involved. And, you know, if you look at it, in this part of Nigeria, you know, I'm sorry, particularly with the Yorubas, you know, other tribes, they do it as well. People, you know, cohabit together. But then, you know, in the event that the man dies, 
what happens to the woman and then if there are children what happens to the children so you know my take you naturalism you know i'd rather for the the couple the people you know involved to secure to secure themselves instead of cohabiting there's no there's no law that protects particularly the female you know here in nigeria unless they have an agreement that, look, if something happens to me, this is what you're going to get. Now, that will now bring us to maybe the man making a will. And then of his own free will, he yes. decides to give you the, the Yes, crumbs, to give her exactly anything whatever it is he, that so he decides. wants to give her. He so decides, Before right. you came on set, Bimbo mentioned something about the common law wife. I mean, a common law wife is a, a woman that has lived with you for a while, over a period of years, I believe that is what it is. What is it that, um, what, what does a common law wife get? Is there a law? Is it in the law anywhere that anything stated uh, to protect a common nothing. law wife? Nothing, nothing protects. But it says common law. One would think that that in itself is a law, common law. Why well, so, is nothing? So, so in the event of um, this cohabitation, the law is very clear. Very that clear. Nothing. There's no amb ambiguity. No. The law that uh, protects uh, cohabitation in England or elsewhere does not exist in Nigeria. No. So the children of uh, cohabitation and uh, the wives, or I mean the, the, the partners of uh, those cohabited couples, really, uh, the, oh, the only thing they get from one another is what is pre-agreed, right. you know, and uh, that is implemented in, in the event that anything happens. In cases like the like uh, this, when cohabitation is is becoming a part of our society and many societies world over, um, removing sentiments, removing religion, removing all that, wouldn't you think that because of the high rate of of cohabitation, shouldn't there now be a law to protect the interest of both parties, not just the women? not just the men, both parties and the children from such a union? Well, I think there should be a law to protect the children. It depends on where you're coming from. Like I know in Bayelsa, yeah, I think Bayelsa, if a woman cohabits with a man and, you know, he hasn't done anything, he doesn't do anything on the lady's head, the children involved bear the woman's father's name. I'm from Edo State, Isha, married to Ekiti. My place, you know, me, a case study, my family, when my dad passed on, right, my, um, one of my dad's wives, you know, had to pay her bride price in death for her children to be recognized and to go along with us, you know, in the right that. So it varies from, from um, community to community from state to state. You know, some will take it and then they will protect the children, but really nothing basically for, for the women. Nothing. nothing. Uh, 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 I mean, so, so, so legally there's nothing for them. No. Morally, traditionally, nothing basically. Nothing. You do it, you're doing it at your own at risk. At your own risk. Well, thank you so much for joining us here. You're welcome. We are gonna take a short break and we'll be right back. joining us this is Amazon's and what we've been talking about today is cohabiting Bimbo and Aisha we have discussed at length mm. this issue of cohabitation and we have oh. we, we I think we've, we've agreed that it's bad no I haven't it agreed. Not, I, oh I haven't. you haven't agreed I'm yes. not looking at the it's right not or advisable. wrong it. if you're saying anything is bad judging by the way we live then it's illegal, it's against the law. There's no law that, there's no one that's gonna come and arrest you for living with someone else. The only way we can really, really say it's wrong because not everybody's a Christian, not everybody's a Muslim. The only way we can get rid of it in that sense is to make it illegal. And since it isn't illegal, I think the thing to look at now is to protect the innocent. My own take is this, in Yoruba they say, you know, we have all we have 
talked about here uh, since uh, for the past 45 minutes or so is uh, the pros and cons of cohabitation. The choice, as usually, is left for you to make. The choice is yours. We have given it the way we thought is best. We've given all the information about cohabitation. The choice really is for the individual. So be wise and make the right choice, whether you still want to cohabitate after this program or you want to stop it if you were in the process of, of cohabitating. The choice really is yours. If you leave yourself open to the point where if anything happens, you don't get anything. Think of the children you, you could bear or you have bore in such relationship in cohabiting and plan your future well. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, keep watching. <laughs>